Hi everyone and welcome to another video where today I'm going to be taking you through one of our most recent air source heat pump installations. So today we're at Throssell Hall Buddhist Abbey which is located in the North Pennines and it's made up of quite a few different buildings but the one that we've been installing the heat pump on is this building behind us. As you can see it's a u-shaped building which is actually made up of two separate parts. So on this side we've got the old original building and this is heated by a biomass heating system. Then around 20 years ago they had the back and the side extended which was heated by an oil boiler and we've replaced for air source heat pumps. The total heat loss for this part of the building was 16 kilowatts and I'll take you around to the other side of the building and I'll show you what we've installed and the reasons why. We're just around the back of the property now and as you can see we've got two valent aerotherm units so we've got the smaller 7 kilowatt unit and also the twin fan 10 kilowatt unit when we were designing this system we sort of tossed around a few different ideas and control strategies and whether it should be a cascade whether it shouldn't be a cascade and because the customer actually had the existing plans from when the property was built we found out that we could easily split the two systems. So rather than cascade the system and have them both working together and then blending the temperature down for the different zones because they wanted different temperatures in the bedrooms and living quarters and also in the working areas and offices. So we've decided to keep these two systems completely separate. There will be situations where a cascade would be a better option. We're taking in all of the information from the customer. We decided that this was the best option having two fully open systems independent of each other so one zone could be one temperature and another zone could be another temperature we've got plenty of system volume in both zones so we're really confident that they're going to work extremely efficiently in terms of the insulation process the first thing that we had to do was dig out a base and a soak away for the units so we dug down to around about 800 millimeters deep just because this is a higher ground frost area so we dug the soak away, backfilled it and then created a solid base for the heat pumps to sit on so they won't be going anywhere. As you can see the primary pipework comes out the back of the unit and up and into the library area inside the building. It then travels across to where the plant room is. So all of the pipework's been insulated with primary pour insulation. We've got inch primaries on the 7 kilowatt unit and 35mm primaries on the 10 kilowatt unit. Even though it's a 10 kilowatt unit, this unit will actually do 12 kilowatts of output on hot water mode. So we wanted to make sure the primaries were nice and big and we're not getting too much velocity through the pipes when it's in hot water mode. We're just inside the plant room now where I'll take you through some of the different components on the system. So first of all, we've got a 400 litre Newark heat geek cylinder and that feeds 12 bedrooms that have all got hand basins. There's also two bathrooms and two toilets. Because some of the outlets on this property are quite far away from the cylinder, we've got a secondary return pump which was already on the existing system. So this just pushes the water around the hot water pipework and it makes sure that you've got hot water pretty much instantly to your taps so you're not wasting too much water before it comes through. With the existing system, this pump was just on 24 seven. It had no brakes whatsoever. So what we've done to try and make it a bit more efficient is we've changed the pump to a newer model and we've also added a thermostat to the pipework. So as soon as that pipe works up the temperature, it cuts the pump out and it's not continuously circulating until the temperature drops and then it kicks back in. In terms of the flow and return pipe work coming from the heat pump, both sets of flows come into here and then straight up to diverter valves. So for the 10 kilowatt unit, we've installed an inch and a quarter ESB valve. So in the past, we've always installed that ESB valve on any system that's been above seven kilowatts. But we're thinking that we might actually move to these valves for every one of our projects in future. I think we're gonna have a lot less problems in future. It's a much more quality valve that we're using. It's a bit more expensive, but I think in the long run, they're going to be worth the money. We've also got two sets of filters on this installation, one from each heating system and two sets of safety groups as well. Because we didn't cascade this system, we had to choose which of the heat pumps was going to do the hot water demand for the property. So obviously having a bigger unit, that was going to be the one that we chose. So the 10 kilowatt unit does the hot water and also the living accommodation. 
What we did do is build a bit of a fail safe in there. So if the 10 kilowatt unit is ever broken or needs repairs for any reason, we've actually tied the flow and return pipe work from the seven kilowatt unit into the cylinder coil as well, but left those shut off with isolation valves. So if the 10 kilowatt unit was ever down, all we'd have to do is shut the valves from the 10 kilowatt unit, open the ones up from the seven kilowatt unit, and then that can also do the hot water demand. So for the radiators and design temperature for this property, we sat down with the customer and spoke about the different impact that different design temperatures would have. In the end, we settled on a 45 degree design temperature, which meant that we had to change 14 of the radiators in the property. If they went any lower than that, the efficiency would have increased, but they wouldn't have seen the benefits for a long time because they would have had to change nearly all of the radiators on the system. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and if you've got any questions about the installation please leave a comment and we'll always do our best to reply or if you've got questions about a project that you're looking at please visit greenhomeheating.co.uk or give us a call on 0191 508 7171.